Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy Friday to you. I tell you what, you guys, I am so excited. I am so excited. We have an amazing broadcast for you today. We've got some great insights, some great information, and I, I can't wait to launch into it. So as you guys are coming on, go ahead and make sure you share the video, share this morning's broadcast. Um, we Well, I tell you what, you know, we're just watching what's going on, and I was actually listening to several other and while we're waiting on folks to get on, I was actually listening to several other people talking about, you know, this election and what's going on and how, you know, and they was like, well, you know, the prophet said that this is going to happen and he didn't. I'm like, hold up, chick. Hold up. Do you get, do you see what is going on? I cannot wait to go over some of the insight that God has been sharing with me. But I'm excited. I am so in excited, in fact, because we actually get to watch God kick butt and take numbers in real time. That's what you are watching. You are watching God kick butt and take numbers in real time. There is so much movement in the prophetic. There is so much. Good morning, Gina. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. God is moving. There are exciting things happening, and we get to participate. If you want to be a part of it, you get to participate. If you're a believer in the, hi, Lisa. What's up? What's up? Come on in here. Come on. We've got a great broadcast for you today. I'm so excited. I tell you what, there is nothing like being a part of God's inner circle where you get to get the inside scoop. You get to know what's going on. You get to see what's going on. So when you see stuff happening out there in the ether sphere, you don't get all scared and all tripping going, oh, this what's going on. Oh, what's going to happen? No, 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 baby. God got this. He got all of this. He got this so much. In, and so, in fact, there is so much going on. And there is so much angelic movement. I mean, just to be... I mean, I, there have been times within these last these last few weeks and months where I literally can feel, it's almost like I can feel angels swooping. You know what? Because the Lord told me that this house where I live, he said, it's a port, it's an entryway. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. Come on in. You guys, as you come on, go ahead and share the post. We've got some great insight. We've got some great, hi, Christina. We've got some great strategies, and we're going to let you guys know what to do. Okay, this is this is this is the time when the Lord gave me the assignment of launching of first of all writing the first book, the Kyle Woman, realizing that Kyle means warrior, it means wealth, and it means wisdom. I had no idea where he was going. I got it now. I get it now. So today we're actually going to be talking about there are a couple of things I need to recap for you, and you you can go back to another broadcast because you need to understand what's going on. First of all, what you see, what's going on, it is just the beginning of the, it's, it is the, okay, so calm down still. Several weeks ago, I did a broadcast, and that broadcast was three things that are coming. Good morning, Doris. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Who else I got on here? Good morning, Lisa. You guys, I knew God was speaking, and he gave me three things. He says, this is what you need to be prepared for. And these are the three things that are coming. Now, this is what's going to transpire between now and between the time that the, the spirit of the Antichrist steps into place. These are the three things that you need to know so when you see stuff happening like what you see going on with this election you don't trip don't trip because God got this God got this and he is doing so much more than you recognize so the first thing he said was that this there would there would be a final stage of the shaking the final stage of the shaking the next thing he said is there was going to right after the shaking there would be a righteousness revolution and then right after the righteousness revolution, he says there was going to be a rapid shift, another twist and a rapid shift towards evil. Now, I went into depth into all three of those in another broadcast. You can go back and go to my YouTube channel and watch that. But with that, so what you're seeing, so as I was, I was praying, not, I hadn't even told anybody this. I hadn't really shared it with anybody. So as I was praying one day, I, not long ago, I'm just praying in the spirit. And I get this image of a long red spoon, this long, like a long red spoon. And I could only see the spoon coming out of the darkness. But as I saw the spoon coming out of the darkness, I saw the spoon. And then I saw Uncle Sam. 
sitting at a table with his Uncle Sam hat and his uncle, just, you know, the character Uncle Sam. And so I'm sitting there looking at Uncle Sam with this cat, and I see this spoon go into his mouth. And he, this big, and it's a big spoon, and it's, they're shoving stuff down his throat. And so Uncle Sam just goes, he's like, mm, and he swallows it, mm. And he swallows, mm, he swallows. And you know that, okay, now I don't know if you've ever had a child get sick and they have what's called a projectile vomit, okay? So I'm see, I'm watching this image in my, I'm watching, it's an it's, it's open vision. I, again, I tell you guys, I have these periodically. So I'm watching this, and then as I'm watching him, I see the spoon scoop up stuff off this big, huge plate. And I look at the plate, and it's got maggots in it, and it's got worms, and it's got, it's got rotting flesh, and it's got, and it's, and it's just, it's like all, it's, you know, and it looks like vegetables that have mold on it, and it's all, all of it was corrupt. All of it was corrupt. And I could tell he had been eating this crap for a long time. I could see. And so finally, at one point, he stopped and he just sat there. And I don't know if you've ever watched a child do a projectile vomit. But what I saw Uncle Sam do is I saw him. <clears throat> and then just like a projectile vomit, this huge heave. And all of the crap he had been eating went out of his mouth. And it shot across the room. And I was like, whoa, God, what is that? He said, what you just saw was a visual imagery of what the final stage of the shaking is. Because you see, in order for there to come a righteousness revolution, all of the garbage, the corruption, the evil, the deceit, the kidnapping of children, the abortion, the murder, all of that stuff, got to, this nation has to vomit it up. It's got to come up. We cannot go into a righteousness revolution. We cannot step, the church of uh, the ecclesia of God cannot step into that next level of authority as long as this stuff is hidden and undercover. And so a lot of the deception and the deceit is being brought out into the open. So that the whole nation, the whole world can see the corruption that's been going on behind the scenes. Don't get it twisted, my friend. Don't think that God is going to go, oh my goodness. Wow, he did all those things for Israel. No, I'm not going to let, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, no, he, I'm not going to fight for him. That's wrong. That's not what the word of God says. The word of God says that he, he will bless those that bless the nation of Israel. He will stand, he will fight for those who fight for Israel. He will defend those who defend that nation. And if there is one president who has defended the nation of Israel, who stood with Israel, who stood, there are only two nations in the history of this world that were born out of the heart of God. The first one, God drew Israel in as his nation. That nation was born out of the heart of God. The second one was historically, this nation was born out of the righteous desire to have a place where people could come and worship God freely. That's a love for God. So both of those come out of the heart of God. So when we watched, so when I saw this huge projectile vomit, I knew that the corruption that this nation has been under, the lying deceit that this nation has been under, the evil and the wickedness that's been hidden in darkness, the word of God says that there is nothing done in secret that shall not be brought into the light. So we realize that all of this stuff that's been done in darkness, that all of this stuff that's been done, I just got a list. I got, I, in fact, it was posted inside the Cayo Circle. I got a list of, it's like, it's like 30, uh, 30 voting irregularities, 30 different ways that they're violating the law, breaking the law with this election. But you know what? That had to come out. It has to be exposed. It has to be brought to light. It has to be brought. Why? Because once it comes out, once you vomit, once you get the crap out your system and you get it out there now you can clean it up but what is still in your gut cannot be cleaned up there is no probiotic that can kill corruption some corruption you just got the stomach got to be pumped and that's what this nation is going through so when you see this election when you, and see there's a whole and we remember I okay so another thing I told you guys is that when you want if you want to walk in a spirit of discernment 
So, so let me break this up. So the first thing I told you again, the three things that were coming. So you need to be aware of those. You need to recognize that there are characteristics that go with each one of those things. There are move. There is an anointing. There is a power. There is an authority. There is a governmental authority and advancement that goes with each one. And if you are in the kingdom of God and you cannot see it, you have a discernment issue. Because the word of God says in the last days, he said, that there would be a falling away. And what causes people to fall away is their inability to discern and see and recognize what God is doing. They look at, so a lot of people looking at, the, looking at Trump going, oh, you know, he this and he that. And they don't even get it. They don't even recognize that God uses a Cyrus. He use a, if he can use a donkey, he can use him. And it's not who he is. It is what he has done that is in alignment with the purposes and the plan of God. And if you can't get that something wrong with your discernment, you need to check it because if your discernment is off, if your capacity to recognize the move and the power of God is off, you will be in the wrong camp. And the word of God gives you two things that you need to be aware of. He said, he said, wide is the gate. There is a wide gate and there's a narrow gate. He said, wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And if you are, and so look around you. Look at the media. Look at what's going on on television. I get so excited because I'm like, God, it's right. It is so clear. It is so obvious. So when a person's discernment is off and they're looking at things that are inconsistent with the will of God and you're looking and you see Facebook and you see Twitter and you see all of these different, all of these different entities that want to come on, that are, that are, that are fighting against, against, well, and, and, and there are so many things that God is doing that are subtle, that are subtle, that are subtle. Like I, I saw this and I actually saw this on, on a video uh, on a video with um, with uh, um, it's supernatural, and he was and he was talking about uh, Mario Murillo was talking about November fifth. How back in the 1600s there were two attempts back in the 1600s to overthrow the government of the UK. And the, on the on November fifth, the corruption and the coup attempt to overthrow the government were both exposed on the fifth of November. God has a sense of humor, and He was like, you know what? We're gonna just let it be the fifth of November, so that when you start seeing the corruption exposed, you see it as a prophetic marker, recognizing that God is moving and He has His hands on this process. He has his hands on this process. So don't get scared. Don't get it twisted. So you know the three things that are coming is the first thing that I talked about. Then the next thing that we talked about was, we t was that Uncle Sam with the long red spoon. Now, after I thought about it, I said, the long red spoon, that's clearly China. That's clearly China. There is so much wickedness and evil coming from that nation because there is a principality trying to put China, which has a place in prophetic end time, end time, um, in time information, uh, in time prophecy, that there is a role that China gets to play, but it's not yet. Because Matthew 24, 14 has to happen. The gospel has to be preached. There is a huge global revival. There is a huge, and it's not just revival, it's a reformation. There, this is what it's going to look like. First of all, there comes the season of repentance. Once a person, the nation e ejects all of that corruption and gets it out of the system, then people will begin to see. And so there are a whole lot of people in the church who are on the wrong side. They're in this big wide gate thinking that they're in the, they're they're in the narrow way. They're in this big wide gate thinking, oh, I'm on the side of God. They're in this big wide gate. And let me see that the word of God says that clearly there is a, the narrow gate leads to life. So when you talk about any form of a life, the narrow gate leads to life. How can you say, go and vote for a person that, that has promoted 65 million abortions and be in the right gate? How can you do that? And so some of y'all who did that, who went and voted that way, you need to repent because the word says that there is an accuser of the brethren and that the curse doesn't land without a cause. And if you give the enemy by partnering with that demonic spirit, if you give him cause to bring a curse on your bloodline by partnering with that demonic spirit, your vote was a cosign and that cosign has a payday and Satan is a evil and a, and a hateful, ugly, I'm, he is an evil creditor. 
And he will come to your bloodline for a payday. If you don't bring that boat under the blood of Jesus and repent for what you did, if you think that you can stay in the wide gate and enter the kingdom of God, if you can stay in that gate that leads to destruction, because narrow is the way that leads to life, it leads to life. And that life is for all humanity. It is for every conceived human being. That narrow gate leads to life. And so if you have partnered with a demonic spirit, don't think that the enemy ain't going to come looking. He's like, there's a payday. Sin, all sin, all wickedness, all corruption has a payday. It has a payday. And Satan has a day that he will show up on your bloodline looking for payment. And if you don't understand that, I, I'll do more teaching on it. Another, so, so that being said, so now I told you, so we talked about the three things that are coming. We talked about Uncle Sam with the long red spoon. Now I want to touch on Revelations eleven fifteen because that's what's happening. There is a shifting of kingdoms. Revelations eleven fifteen says that that the second woe has passed. Behold, the third woe is coming shortly. Then the seventh angel sounded his trumpet and loud voices called out of heaven. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our God and his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. What you see is the precursor to the manifestation of that passage. There is a precursor that has to happen. Now, there are things that have to be put into place in preparation for that strategic alignment of the word of God and one of the things is the corruption in this nation because this nation has an assignment on it America God is not through with the United States of America I'm happy to tell you we still got work to do we still have things to do we still have a covenant that was established with this nation and the covenant must manifest it has to come forth so knowing that now we get to go over to Psalms chapter 2 so what this is what you're looking at this is what you are watching right now, Psalms 2 and 1. It says, why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Verse 2, Psalms 2 and 2. For the kings of the earth have set themselves, they have set, so the kings of the earth. So when you look at, you look at, you look at Gavin Newsom, the kings of the earth. You look at Gavin Newsom, you look at Joe Biden, you look at, you look at, um, uh, at uh, Cuomo, the kings of this earth and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. His anointed is the kingdom of God and the body of Christ. So he's already, God has already said, the kings of the earth have set themselves and the rulers take counsel. So they go in these back rooms, they make these deals and they say, well, this is what we're going to do. And we're going to take, we're going to take under God out of the pledge of allegiance. And we're going to take the, uh, I, I do solemnly swear. You know, we're going to take that, that, uh, uh, so help me God, we're taking that out of that, of that, of that oath. And then not only that, we're going to, we're going to release legislation in the state of California that reduces the penalties for pedophilia. Oh, and by the way, we're going to bring you the Equality Act and we're going to make all of these immoral lifestyles of, we're going to protect every form of deviant, immoral lifestyle and we're going to make the church swallow it. That ain't happening. Not in this window of time. God is watching and he's saying the kings of the earth have set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing saying, now this is what they're saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from, un, from, from us. Now what does that mean? The bands are bands of restriction and restraint because righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to any people when he says they put the best those are the restraints that keep people from hurting and harming that keep pedophiles from raping three four five even newborn infants this stuff is going on and we're just like oh well what's that about look no, you give that god is angry he is a, his wrath is not angry with humanity. He is angry with the, with the wickedness that humanity is, 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 is participating and partnering with. And that has to.
to be judged. Now that comes a t and so what brings about that level of judgment is that first of all, God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, don't tell me if people ain't been praying in this nation this whole year. We have, I know I've been praying and there has been so much intercession and get this, the church is not going to do what it did before. It's not going to pray, get over the hump and then go back to business as usual. No, 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 no. The kingdom of God is coming for a takeover, but the kingdoms of this earth, they are becoming the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. That is what is coming to happen. Now, I know the Antichrist is going to have his little window of time, but in the name of Jesus, the kingdom of God, the ecclesia, the chosen called out once, are rising into their authority. They're stepping into place. They're getting into position. They're taking their authority. They're exercising dominion. They are putting the enemy asunder. They are rising up. And if you are not in that, and if you can't see that, and if you can't recognize that God is strategizing, and he is exposing the evil works of darkness and he is bringing the hidden things of darkness into light and once that happens and the projectile vomiting of this wickedness comes out of this nation blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord we will step into our final phase of our assignment in this earth which is to spread the gospel now what's gonna happen Oh, wait, let me go back to this. So Psalms 2 and 3, let us break their bands. This is what the, this is what Cuomo, I'm going to call their names, Gavin Newsom, Cuomo, Joe Biden and his wicked self. And yes, yes, even Obama had some of that in there too. He, a lot of this stuff began under that administration and the things that they're trying to accuse Donald Trump of doing, everything is a projected lie. It's the lie. It's the stuff that they were doing. They turn around and try to project it on this man. No, the devil is a lie. God will hold him up. God will sustain him and the power of God is going to allow him to finish his assignment. And if you don't believe that, God going to show you something. It's coming. It's coming. God is not going to let us get this far and then turn around and go, oh, well, I'm just got, there's nothing else I can do. That devil is a liar. And I'm not going to swallow, believe, or participate with his lies and his deception. In the name of Jesus, God is a God of life. God is a God of truth. God is a God of justice. God is a God of honor. God is a God of righteousness. God is a God of peace. And in the name of Jesus, God is a God of liberty. God does not participate with communism. He doesn't participate with Marxism. He doesn't participate with unrighteousness. He doesn't participate with lawlessness. And in the name of Jesus, we decree that the strongholds that the enemy has endeavored to set across this nation are being broken. For the Lord has sent his Kyle armies. That's my assignment. I am an administrator of the Kyle armies of the Most High God, sending angels strategically into deployed places so that they can support the kingdom of God in manifesting the promises of the word. And that's what we're doing. And so he says, verse two, Psalms 2 and 3, let us break their bands asunder. That's the wicked saying, let's take off the restraints. Let's make it legal for pedophiles to rape children. Let's make it legal. The devil is a lie. We plead the blood over our children and we thank you, Lord, for raising up a standard. And the standard God is raising when the enemy comes in like a flood, the standard that God is raising up is the ecclesia. It is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ taking our dominion, taking authority, decreeing the word, standing on the promises, holding fast to our confession of faith without wavering, persisting until we see the success of the kingdom. And that's what's happening. It's happening. It's rising up. And I'm excited about it. I'm so excited about it. But then it goes on. Psalms 2 verse 4. It says, he that sits in the heavens shall laugh. That's why people are like, well, what you smiling about? If God can laugh about all of this mess going on, so can I. He that sits in heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. He will have them in confusion. He will have them in in. He will have, he is going to, he is going to mess up and misalign all of their strategic efforts. It's going to come to nothing that the, oh, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. The kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent, that's those who are willing to stand up and to take your dominion. The violent, take it by force. The Lord gave me a word long, uh, uh, several months ago, and he gave me the word landslide. And, you know, I was thinking landslide. I was like, wow, Lord, landslide. I said, you think this would be dumb? Trump going to win? by a landslide I didn't get it but what he gave me was he what he was giving me was a prophetic image of what happens when a landslide happens 
first of all, a landslide displaces. So it exposes what's going on underneath. Where there is a weakness and there is a flaw, the land breaks. It has to. So that breakage exposes what's underneath. Then once you expose it, it displaces things and pushes other stuff out of the way. When a landslide happens, there is nothing that can stop it. And God is letting us know that he is bringing about a landslide move in this nation. And that landslide is going to displace principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness. They are coming down. They are coming down. Verse 4, he that sits in heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy mountain of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten me, begotten thee. Speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God is saying, Jesus will rise up. Verse 9 it says, And thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So I'm saying, all of these arrogant, wicked evil mindset and it's not the people it's the principalities we reckon, wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness in high places and anybody that makes it easier for a grown man to insert his penis into the body of a two-year-old child is evil and wicked and that spirit has to come down. It will not overtake this nation. It will break off in the state of California. And I plead the blood of Jesus over the rest of this country. That believers are rising. And righteous people who aren't even born again are rising up to say, not our America. That stuff is being exposed. The pedophilia, the molestation, the rapes, the kidnappings, all of this stuff. It's all intertwined together. Now, last thing I'm going to touch on. So, verse two, so Psalms 2 and 9. Golly, I'm almost out of time. 2 9 says, He shall break them with a rod of iron and shall dash them into pieces like a potter's vessels. God said, I'm going to take a baseball bat and beat the hell out of this mess. That's what he's saying. That's, tra that's, the, Stella's, uh, that's the Stella translation. That's what he said he's going to do it. verse right now the last verse uh verse 10 psalms, psalms 2 10 be wise therefore O you kings now who is he talking about the word of god says that those who are in the body of christ are kings and priests unto our god we are kings we are priests we are called and assigned to exercise authority and take dominion. So when you see, like the list of things that I got, those, I believe, almost 30 irreg voting irregularities from state to state to state, and how the, the enemy is trying to lie and steal and cheat, I believe that if the numbers were done correctly, that he probably would have won, won he probably would have won by a landslide. But God is going to have the final say, we decree, we speak it. So verse Psalms 211, the last verse says, so, no, 10, be wise now, therefore, O you king. So you believers, Christian folk, be wise. Be instructed. You got to get some instructions. And if you are standing, if you're one of those people who voted for that mess, I'm telling you, you need to get out from under that wickedness. You need to repent. You need to call on God and say, God, forgive me. I'm sorry. Lord, help me. Cleanse me. Cleanse my bloodline because sin has a payday. And when you co-sign with wickedness, when you co-sign with evil, Satan, the accuser of the brethren, will come to your blood line come to your family come to your kids come to your grandbabies looking for a payday and you need to cut that thing off in the spirit so be instructed i'm telling you what you need to do be instructed ye judges of the earth what does he say about judges he said judge yourself so that you won't be judged so you, you go back and look at what you co-sign for and you say god i know wow wow lord pedophilia is not a part of your agenda and I just voted with a party that's promoting pedophilia God forgive me I repent that's what he's talking about okay okay verse uh, Psalms 2 12 kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little do you think that God is going to let the blood of 65 million babies that has been crying before his throne that blood has to be answered for so that's what's going on. That's what you see. 
That's what you see. You see that I told you, Uncle Sam with the long red spoon. That's China feeding a corruption. A lot of the stuff that's going on, God is turning the wickedness that China intended towards this nation. He's turning it back on them. They have had plagues. They have had flooding. They have had, and that CCP, it's not the Chinese people. It's the CCP. And we plead the blood of Jesus over the CCP. We pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord cut off their life force, that he severed their capacity. He got, we got a whole ethnic group of people that are being murdered, whose body parts, whose organs are being cut, are being harvested. And the whole world is standing back going, you know, China, you shouldn't do that. And then you got the BBC trying to do a documentary on the unlawful harvesting of human organs from the ethnic minority. That's no worse than Hitler. That's, what, that's the evil stuff that Hitler was doing back in World War II to the Jews. And people aren't saying anything. And you think Joe Biden says that they're, oh, they're good people. And his son and the laptop and all of that stuff partnering with that evil. You think God is going to stand back and go, well, you know... The Americans have voted. I'm not going to do it. No, honey. No, 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 no. Don't get it twisted. God is a righteous God. And righteousness will prevail. And the people of God, the ecclesia, the called out chosen ones are rising up. And we are bringing our words and our decrees into alignment with the promises, the declaration, and the plan of God. And we are saying that in the name of Jesus, there is nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. There is nothing done in secret that shall not be brought into the light. That the wicked and the and the evil ones are being exposed and God is going to bring them up. He's going to bring them out and he's going to put that corruption. It's going to be projectile vomited, vomited out of our nation. And in Jesus name, the rest of them that I don't, I, I, you know, I, I, when, when Ruth Bader, before she died, I had sensed in my spirit that there were three major blockages in Washington, D.C. that were going to be moved this year. There are three major blockages. Ruth Ginsburg was the first one. And I believe before this year is through, there are two more major blockages to the righteous path that God is establishing. And this, I, you know, it's like I saw the, I saw that they're talking about draining the swamp and I saw the swamp and I saw this huge row of big giant boulders that was in the way. And I saw like a golf club swing down and hit one of them. And knocked the first one out of the way. And the water began to seep out. But it was just a little bit. Because you got a whole nother row. But he, three big ones is going to open. Three big ones is going to put so much pressure on the rest of the rest of them are going to be pushed out. Now, I don't know who they're going to be. But I believe that there are two major additional moves that are coming in Washington, D.C. That are going to move things. And it's going to shift. It's going to be what's necessary to shift this thing back towards righteousness. Now, I told you. The final shaking, that's where we're in. The final shaking has to have a heave. It's that feeling of before you throw up, before you vomit, that's what we're experiencing. That's what America is going through. But the projectile vomit of all of the corruption that the enemy has been feeding us, has been shoving down our nation's throat, has been shoving down our law, trying to destroy our laws, trying to take our constitution. It's coming out, it's being exposed, and the enemy is going to be cut off. He's the wicked will be cut off and rooted out of our government. And once that happens, there's going to be a cleansing across the land. It's just like when you throw up and you get that nastiness out of your system, you feel so much better. But with that cleansing, there will be a awareness. There's going to come awareness of the presence of God. People, I'm telling you, between now and the end of this decade, it will be easier for people to get born again than any time on this planet. People People are going to become open and aware of the power of God. They're going to be walking down the street and they're just going to all of a sudden encounter a portal, a portal, an ancient portal that was open through prayer and intercession where some grandmother in that spot or in a house that used to sit there on that land and then somebody's going to walk, drive past that spot and that ancient portal is going to release an anointing and this person's all of a sudden just going to go, wow, I just feel like I need to know Jesus. Who is Jesus? What's this all about? And the gospel is going to reach them and once the gospel reaches them they're going to be saved it's going to happen all over oh entire churches 
are going to be flipped in a day. Entire congregations are going to be flipped in a day. Entire cities are going to be turned around and you're going to find mayors in their office sitting down and all of a sudden the power of God is going to hit them and they're going to begin to weep in the presence of God and go, I need to be saved. And I believe that this move is going to be so great across this land and it's going to be so massive and it's going to be so powerful and it's starting right now and it's going to be so powerful and massive until when Jesus does come to take the church away ain't gonna be many americans left here that's my prayer that's my prayer that's my prayer that there will be such a revival that there won't be anybody in congress there won't be anybody in the courts there won't be anybody in the white house that that, there will be such a move of god and there will be so many people who love the king who love the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords until there won't be anybody here. So I'm excited and that's what's coming. Now, here's the last thing I want to touch on. What do you do? Having heard this information, what do you need to do? What do you need to say? What do you need? If you think, if you're sitting back going, well, Stella, I thought he was going to win. Well, you know what? When David showed up, what you're watching is a David and Goliath moment. What you're watching is a Jehovah's Fat moment. What you're watching is an overcoming moment. And the Lord is letting you know that the, the many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. This president is not just fighting to win an election and for him to be president. He is fighting for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is fighting because people like Gavin Newsom is putting pastors in jail in this country for going to church, when they can go to a casino, when the people can go to an abortion clinic, when the people can go and they can go do all the wickedness, but when they want to go to church and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you tell me that you can't? No, that spirit must come down. And this president is fighting for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we will stand with him and we will fight and we will pray and we will decree and we will hold fast to our confession of faith with wavering, knowing that faithful is the Lord. I am persuaded that God is able to keep that which we have committed unto him. And we will win in the end. Why? Because the kingdoms of this world, hallelujah, the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violence and the determined and the focus take it by force. There are four keys, four keys to your tomorrow, four keys to your future. This is our next online class. Four keys to your future. Number one, in this hour, you must remember what God has done before. If you can't come up with examples in your own life, you need to get into this book. You need to get into this book. Look at the promises that God has made and see where he has brought deliverance before. Because if you remember what he did before, it will inspire your faith to believe it again. So that's number one. Number one, you got to remember. Number two, you got to rebound. One of my favorite stories is the story of Jonathan as Jonathan and his armor Pharaoh were going up the mountain and he says, who's to say that God can't deliver by few or by many? Have you ever seen God win a battle with a whole bunch of people? Don't happen. God loves the undergod. So God looks and he said, oh, okay. Twitter against him. Facebook against him. All of the, the, the whole Democratic Party and half the Republicans who ain't doing nothing. They, they're against him. You know, so we look at all of this opposition. God fights for the underdog. He stands for the underdog. He stands with those who stand for the things that matter to him. He stands with those who care about life. He stands with those who care about Israel. He stands with those who care about this nation retaining its freedoms and protecting its constitution so we can fulfill the assignment that was written into the covenant that was established when this nation nation was born. God stands with those. And so he's doing that. He's doing it. He's raising up people who will do it. And so number one, you got to remember what he's done. Number two, you got to rebound from unbelief. Get the unbelief out your head, out your heart. These are the four actions that you need to take. If you're going to be ready for 2021 and the rest of this decade, and you're going to be able to be in a position to bow up, show up, and, and have the authority to tear and destroy the works of the devil, you got to get these. You got to remember. You got to rebound. Next thing you got to do is you got to refocus. You got to set your face like a flint after the things that matter to God. I don't 
care about the Democratic Party. I don't care about the Republican Party. What I care about is the kingdom of the Most High God. And I care about the kingdoms of this world becoming the kingdoms of our God. And I care about the teenager right now who's sitting somewhere cutting their arms because they have no hope. God is the God of hope. God is the God of peace. I care about the four-year-old that's being repeatedly raped by grown men in some whole evil place. I care about that. And if it matters to God, God cares. It, I, it matters to me. So you need to. You need to refocus on what matters to God. Refocus. Thank you. Whoever that's giving me some love, I appreciate it. Refocus on what matters to God. And once you refocus, then you can restart. You can begin again. And you can get back on your post. You can get back on your assignment. You can get back in the presence of God and say, Okay, Lord, I pull myself together. Just like when Jonathan and his armor bearer was scaling the side of that mountain saying, Who's to say that God can deliver by few or many? And they get up there and then God steps into the battle with them and Jonathan and his armor bearer begin to defeat the Philistines and then all of a sudden Saul who's sitting somewhere under a pomegranate tree hears the commotion of Jonathan his armor bearer just two people just two people just two people fighting with God God hallelujah plus nothing is everything we need I love Patricia King that's her saying and so we fight we stand and we win and so as Jonathan and his armor bearer were climbing up the mountain as they're fighting against the Philistines and taking out the Philistines, God joins in the battle. And then all of a sudden, you had people who were with the, with the Philistines, who were Israelites, who were traitors, who had turned. That's some of the people who have turned against the cause of God, who are voting for policies that have that are trying to destroy the rights of the church in this nation. Your God is going to turn your heart and turn you around. So those who had turned and partnered with the Philistines would change their their mind. They came to their senses and they got back on the kingdom and they began to fight with the nation of Israel. They began to fight with Jonathan. And they began to fight for the cause of God. And then there was another group. There's a group who hide now who said, well, you know, I'm going to vote for Trump on the slap, but I ain't going to say nothing. I'm not going to tell nobody because I'm scared of the ramifications. That's the next group, another group. So when Jonathan and his armor bearer started fighting, God joined in the fight. Then the traitors who had traitor were traitors with the Philistine. They switched and came back on God. Outside. Then the ones who were hiding out in the caves, who didn't want anybody to let, didn't want to tell anybody that, well, I really do believe in the cause of God, but I'm not going to say anybody. I'm not going to let anybody know I'm born again. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. So you better speak up. You better show up. You better get up. You better pull yourself together. You better get this word, and you better put this word on your lips. You better put this word in your mouth. You better fill your heart with this word so you can do your assignment because there is a king coming. His name name is Jesus. He will recover his earth. He will take over this land. He will see himself strong and God will show himself strong on our behalf because we are the people of the most high God and we will fulfill our assignment. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And that's what you got to do. So you got to remember those four. So those four points, I'm going to be teaching more about those four points in our upcoming class. We've got a class coming. It's, it's, I do it every year. So don't say, oh, she's just doing a class. No, I do this class every year. I've been I actually been doing this lesson. It's, it's a year in review as I position myself for the next year and the move of God. God has got stuff coming and you need to be ready for it. Because if you're not ready, you will get run over. He's coming because a landslide, if you don't run fast and get ahead of it, it will cover you up. It will bury you. And that's what God is letting you know. It's our time. It's our time. So there are two things and two resources you need. If you are in the Kyle circle, you guys, there is a post. I'm going to actually put, I'm going to put a larger version of it. But it has the 20, I think it was like 30 irregularities in this election. We're going to go one down. We're, gonna, we're, getting, we're getting ready for a call inside the Kyle circle at 11 o'clock today. So when I get off here, I got a Zoom call. Y'all can go ahead and go ahead and inside the Kyle circle. Go ahead and set up your Zoom and get ready because what we're going to do is we're going to take authority. This is what the ecclesia does. We're going to bind up. We're going to pray over each one of those 20, 22 to 30 points. We're going to pray over them. We're going to bind the enemy. We're going to release the angelic. We're going to, and that's what the Kyle circle is all about. We are here to establish the three dimensions of this anointing. It is a warrior's anointing. It is a wealth anointing for the perpetuation of the gospel. And it is a wisdom anointing of how to use resources 
resources in a way to establish the kingdom of God in you. That's what we do. That's what we're about. I want to say thank you guys so much for being on here with me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little lit today. I know I'm lit out there and that's okay. That's okay. Because we got something to be excited about. We get to watch God kick butt and take numbers in real time. In real time. I ain't got to read about it in the Bible. I ain't got to go do a study. I can sit back and watch CNN be made a fool love for lying. Talking about a 17 point spread. The devil is a lie. 17 points. And so it's neck and neck with them cheating. With them cheating, it's neck and neck. So can you imagine what the spread would have been if they weren't cheating and if they weren't lying? Tell me the devil is a fool. He's a fool. And Father God, we thank you. Again, I remind, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and rulers of the darkness in high places. We praise you, Father, as we end this broadcast. We decree that Jesus Christ is Lord over the United States of America, and that no weapon formed against this nation, no weapon of corruption, no weapon of evil, no weapon of deception, no weapon of communism, no weapon of Marxism, no weapon of lawlessness, no weapon of violence, no weapon of looting shall, hallelujah, prosper. And we decree in Jesus' name that the waves of righteousness, the ripples, effects of righteousness, the water is starting to move. It's starting to move. It's starting to move and get ready to roll across this land. That believers are coming to themselves and going, oh my God, what was I thinking? You weren't. That's okay. God, you can renew your mind. God says be renewed in the spirit. Hallelujah. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can think the thoughts of God so that you can hold the thoughts, the intentions, and the purposes of his heart. God is rebirthing his heart, his intentions, his motives, his cares, his concerns in the lives of people. In the lives of people. Oh, one more thing the Lord wants me to say. This is the last thing I'm, I, I, I'm trying to stop you guys, but he keeps giving me more stuff. There are people, when it comes to this abortion issue, I have heard so many Christians say and use this as an excuse to vote in favor of an evil act. And they say, well, what about all the babies that come here and nobody loves them? Let me tell you something about humanity. When options change, decisions, choices, and behavior changes. When options change, behavior changes. Let me give you an example. I'm going to give you two. The first example of when options change, behavior changes. Remember back, I believe it was in the mid-90s, early 90s, late 80s, when they said, Social Security says, we're not going to mail out Social Security checks anymore. Every person has to go open a checking account. There was a huge uproar, and people said, I don't want to get a checking account. I don't want, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. What did they do? They changed it anyway. What did all them rascals who said they couldn't get a check, couldn't get a checking account, what did they do? They went and found a way to get a checking account so that their, so that their, their social security money could be direct deposited. That's an example of when options change, behavior changes. So don't tell me that, uh, let me give you number two, when the pandemic started and all of a sudden people say, you got to wear a mask. You got to put a mask on. I don't care if you going to church. I don't care if you going to the bus stop. You going to the grocery store. You put a mask on. What did they do? You see them all outside of Walmart lined up around the corner. What? With their mask on. If you can change your behavior to, to open an account so that you can receive a social security check. If you can change your behavior to put on a mask so that you won't contract the pandemic, the CCP virus. You can change your behavior and you can use contraceptives. There are over 50 different varieties of contraceptions that can protect you from pregnancy from for one day for up to 10 years. You, If you can put on a mask and change that behavior, you can change your behavior and use contraceptions. And you can go and get an implant that can cover you from, from pregnancy for 10 years. So don't tell me, well, what about all the babies that come here? We can change our behavior. This nation and the women in this nation, we are smarter than that. We are better than that. We are bigger than that. And when someone holds us to a higher standard, honoring and respecting life, then we will change our behavior and do accordingly. So don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't another Christian say to me, well, there are a lot of babies that are being born that nobody's taking care of. 
If you can put on a mask, you can put on a condom. If you can put on a mask to keep yourself from getting sick, you can go and get an implant. If you can stop going to a nursing home to visit your grandmama, you can stop going to Joe Bobo's home screwing at, in the middle of the night. We can change our behavior so that it is no longer necessary to abort a baby eight, nine months old. We can change our behavior. And don't tell me we can't. We're better than that. We are women. We are American women. We are women leading the world. And we can do that. We can teach our daughters that if they want to have sex and they want to have unprotected sex, we can teach our daughters, okay, sweetheart, if that's a choice that you make, let's go ahead and get you an implant so that you'll be protected against pregnancy for the next four or five years. If that's your choice, baby, let's go ahead and get you some con. If that's what you want to do, change your behavior. If you want to screw around, sleep around, don't punish a creation of God for your unwillingness to protect yourself. If you can protect yourself from the coronavirus, you can protect yourself from pregnancy. And that's all I got to say about that. I'm done, y'all. I love you. Thank you guys so much. Be watching for, uh, I'm going to, I'll be doing a couple of live videos about our fall a year in review and we pre as we prepare for 2021 and moving forward. What we're going to be teaching in this class are some concepts that you need to have, that you need to incorporate into the fabric of your walk with God that you need so that you will be able to move forward in 2021 and beyond. This, the 2021 is just going to be, it's the opening decade of what's, uh, it's, it's an enlargement of what God started in 2020. Okay, it's a decade of the mouth, but there are some things that you're going to need to decree. There are some things that you're going to need to visualize. There are some things that you're going to need to rebound from. There are some things that you're going to have to refocus on. And there are some things that you're going to have to upstart. You're going to have to restart because the enemy shut down a whole lot of people. And God is saying just because the enemy shut you down doesn't mean you can't restart. On that note, I'm out of here. Thank you so much, Gina. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Doris. Thank you, Alejandra. Thank you, Precious. That's my girl. Thank you, Amanda. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys so much for being on here with me. Now, what I need y'all to do is go ahead and share this video and let other people see it. And uh, I'm, I'm, it's got to be posted on my YouTube channel. Make sure if you are not a member of the Cayo Circle, we're going live in the Cayo Circle with a, um, with a uh, Zoom uh, no, it's not. I don't know if it'll be live in the circle. We've got you. If you're in the circle, go ahead and you can log in because I'm going to my Zoom chat, my Zoom channel right away. I don't know if I'll be able to live. You guys, I'm waiting on my new laptop. I've, I'm, I'm ordering a new laptop. It's being configured for me so that I will have new updated technology. I'm so grateful. God is good to his girl. He's good to his girl. So in the, in the next couple of days, you're going to start seeing a lot of changes. We're waiting on some things that we've ordered for our new set. We've got a new studio video coming and it's going to be it's going to be awesome till next time i love you guys thank you for being on here with me and you make it a terrific day bye bye